Today we're going to show you how to use this weapon, which is a gravel vacuum. For value, this thing's amazing because really it's defeats a hose in this thing, but I use it all the time. I keep telling myself every time I use it, I'm going to get slightly longer tubing, and I never do for 12 years straight now. What I'm going to show you today is how to start this without sucking on the end or doing anything of that craziness, how to make sure we're getting the waste out of the gravel and not stirring it up inside, and then also how to do it on a low tank. So maybe you've got a 10 gallon or something really close to the bottom. How do we do that? So for the top tank, I've got plenty of drop and I'm gonna use this trash can. Now I recommend a really big bucket, kind of like one of those laundry totes or something like that, or uh, you know maybe a tote from Home Depot, a bucket you can be derping around cleaning and all of a sudden you're flooding your floor without realizing. And this will hold 35 or 55 gallons. So, all right, we're gonna start with our edumacation up here. Kind of some basic principles. Water is gonna flow down a pipe. This end of it has to be lower than this end of it. So we put that in the bucket, right? The trick is here, we need the water to come out of the tank down the pipe. If you just put it in like this, it doesn't do anything. Cause right here, it's got all this air. It doesn't do anything, right? You can put it all the way down doesn't do anything. I will show you a trick that works, but it is stupid and don't do this because it takes too much time. You can put the entire dirty hose that you have in your aquarium. If you've got a, a planted tank and all of that, like this is not the best thing, but you can, you can get all the air out of your hose, right? Now you put your thumb on the end of the hose. Here you go, you go, oh yeah. Now we have a tube filled with water mostly. If we put that down in our bucket, now it flows, magic, right? Well, let's not ruin our aquarium to do that this time. Poor little guys. Easy planter, buy it now. <laughs> uh, all right, so this time, still the end goes in the bottom, right? Easy, you don't have to get all wet like I'm wet right now. Now the goal is we need to fill up the tube and the hose with water without letting air in. You put this in at an angle, lowering it down, and right now it's still all full of air because this tip hasn't gotten below the water. See how it fills up? We're now filled up with water here. We're crimped right here. That's fine, right? When I lift this above, I'm going to do this once just to, because I made this video before and not everyone gets it. So we really want to make sure people get it. If I lift this up, the water that is in here is going to go down here. I think we can... It all went down and then we ran out, right? It hit air, so it stopped. It's not hit air this time. So we put it down in, we're filled. Now what's gonna happen, I'm gonna lift it up and once the water, once it starts flowing, I'm gonna put it back down. Water's flowing, goes back down. Now I have water, right? Let's do that again. We put it back down in, just like that and there's no air. Lift it up, once the water starts going, we put it back down in. Now we have it. Next tip, you are gonna drain your aquarium if you just talk to a camera like this or you talk to your significant other. Pinch your hose, just like that. You wanna be able to have control. So even though there's no water flowing right now, I could talk to a customer, I could talk to you guys for five minutes and do nothing. And then, oh, I'm ready to start again. Yeah, see? So this is gonna be very useful when we're gravel vacuuming, this is how I do it. You got your water flowing. You now put it into the bottom. If I don't stop it, now it's sucking up gravel. Look at my gravel going, that's not good. You pinch it. You ever seen someone do this move? Like, oh no, get out of there. You see how much dust is floating around? Right, again, I pinched it so I could talk. So your goal is lift, when the, lift se when the waist separates, right? because I pinched it and nothing's moving. We can see it right here. You can actually throttle and get it super clean and not take out a lot of water in your aquarium. A lot of people run out of water. If you never pinch, right, you're gonna run out of water on that 10 gallon tank. You gotta pinch when you move it. So then we move it back. We open it up. We start separating. It's now separated. We can actually now move it on. You see how much we can basically get it so that it's always going to be super brown water. See, there's the separation we wanted. So I highly recommend we go into a corner. We start one corner and you, it's like you're mowing a lawn. Start cleaning it, start cleaning it. All right, now we're clean. 
keep it pinched, move it back, keep going. And we're just going to make rows. So you can see how you end up with little piles, right? Kind of like when you're mowing a lawn. You get lines from mowing your lawn. And now you can know. By the way, these are the easy planters. And you can see that the roots were in the substrate. So they go through the bottom, and it was in there. And now I can move it again. And right where it was, waste always settles really thick under decorations. So you always want to move decorations when you're doing it. And you keep moving. Here's my last tip. Don't miss it. When you remove this from your aquarium, put your hand at the end of it, right? So I've got it pinched right now. If I let go, it siphons onto my hand. It's suction cupped on here. Now, all right, so here we are in a much lower aquarium. That's why I'm sitting down. I've only got about a foot off the floor, right? Now, here I've got that small bucket. And you can see we've done water changes and clean sponges and that kind of stuff before. I've got to put this in here, and I've got to have the presence of mind to not overfill it. So the container has to be lower than your aquarium. That just has to be. All right? So we're going to get this started again. Now, this aquarium has been neglected for a reason. The fish that are in here are very rare. They're wild caught from Peru when we went there. These guys have not spawned for me, and I'm hoping with all the mulm like they would have in the wild, they will spawn. They have not yet. Now these platies that are in there, they're just in there because they look cute. So they are not wild, obviously. All right, so now we're gonna do the same tactic to get this started. It just, you don't, you gotta go a little bit slower a lot of times. So we fill it up with water. It won't go as fast. You see how it's going to go slower? You got more time to react. So you could just normally gravel vac like normal. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna suck up a bunch of sand, right? With sand, typically, waste settles on the top, right? So if I come over here and I gravel vac, this tank has been not gravel vac much longer than the one we just did, but not that much comes off of it, right? The sand itself is pretty, uh, pretty clean. And so a lot of times you kind of just vacuum the top. You see how it cleans itself up? That's so, so <laughs> yeah, if you have a sand aquarium, you don't need to go very deep at all. Just that top, you know, maybe quarter inch or so. You know, maybe you got decor, right? You want to clean that up a little bit. Now, we haven't been vacuuming that long. Can we agree on that? We have a half a bucket full already. Like, it's real easy to forget. So don't forget, you don't want to ruin your carpet. You don't want your spouse ruining you after you ruin the carpet. Let's say, I'm not going to clean that sponge filter today. You can vacuum it. You can push into a sponge filter and vacuum it. See that? If I push into the side, ah, looks like safe. The goal with a planet tank is fish poop is, and mulm and that kind of stuff, broken down material is useful for rooted plants. So things like the cryptocorns really thrive with gunk in the substrate. We put root tabs also, but this gunk, I don't want to remove at all. I'm going to start it up again, make sure I don't get my baby fish. Here we go. Water's flowing, I'm gonna pinch it. You've got two plants right here, right? Usually, a plant will have about a six inch radius around it where it's pulling nutrients from. So I'm gonna show you how dirty this aquarium is, right? So all that poop in there is food for that plant. So it comes all the way over to here, right? All those little hairs. The little roots, these little ones, are actually what feed and they're called tap roots. Okay, now I'll have to replant this later. But you can see all this gunk is what they want to be eating in addition to root tabs and things like that. Just want to get the top layer. So now we have this plant here that I have not disturbed, but I've got gunk in there that I don't necessarily want. You want to get just like the little top layer. So you might go, okay, I'm going to go like a quarter inch and just remove that top layer of sludge. And you do it right here. So that way you're not breaking any of the roots, right? You go in between the plants, just like I'm doing, and you kind of just keep working your way through. And that is how you do sand, how you do planted tanks, how you do tall tanks, short tanks, and how you keep an eye on your bucket. Because if I go too much longer, 
I got poopy water on the floor, and nobody likes that.